Number 10, Natalie Portman and Benjamin Millipede. After 11 years of marriage, it was recently announced that the Thor Love and Thunder star Natalie Portman and her husband Benjamin Millipede will be separating following a very public and messy affair on Ben's part. Ben, who is definitely named after a kid's cartoon, can't remember which one, was spotted with a 25 year old climate activist while Portman was off doing something. Portman was initially pretty mad, but then she tried to work things out with Ben in an attempt to save their marriage. But the affair put a massive strain on the relationship and it doesn't look like it's going to be working out. The couple had met on the set of the 2009 drama Black Swan with Ben acting as a script writer for the project. While the affair had shaken their relationship, when asked about the issues by US Weekly, Ben said that he shared her pain and that she was actually working on a new script that's on its way to her desk. Now, while they may still be working together professionally, emotionally, speaking, these two, I'm pretty sure they've checked out. Number 9, Jeremy Allen White and Addison Timlin. Jeremy made a big move in the acting world after his FX comedy The Bear premiered on Disney Plus and other streaming services this past year, but he actually has been making people laugh, cry, and scream since we were introduced to him as Lip Gallagher in the hit TV series Shameless, a show that I definitely haven't watched 15 times in a row. Wouldn't do that. He met his future wife Addison on set of a film called After School in 2000. And, eight, and they were close friends for like 12 years before they became an official item in 2019. The relationship was mainly taking place behind the scenes apart from a few Instagram posts here and there, but Jeremy's love for his wife has been well known since his acceptance speech at the 2023 Golden Globes, where he won the award for best actor in a musical or comedy TV series. Unfortunately, roughly a few months ago, Addison filed for a divorce from Jeremy with little to no explanation. Three days following the divorce announcement, she posted a pic with herself and her daughter on Instagram with the caption saying single mom, which was news to Jeremy who was under the impression that they would be, you know, continuing to work together as co-parents. While their relationship may have ended in a mess, there might be a new one on the horizon because Jeremy has been spotted with Wizards of Waverly Place alumni Selena Gomez. So Alex Russo and Lip Gallagher would make very cute babies together. Number eight, Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner. Joe and Sophie got together back in 2016 after they'd been set up by mutual friends, something they had been trying to do for a long time. They got together and instantly fell in love, getting married just over a year after getting together. Sophie admitted to Rolling Stones in 2019 that she was hesitant at first. Joe was this big musician and she was a big TV and film star, meaning that at times they would be on opposite ends of the world. Eventually, she warmed up and got together with Joe officially. The split comes out of nowhere. For the most part, their relationship seemed to be stable on the outside. They were never apart or involved in a cheating scandal, which is surprising considering Joe's lack of discretion in the past. There were never any strange rumors or photos, they were just this happy couple. But as of September 1st, Joe Jonas has filed for a divorce from Sophie with the only current information being that Joe is claiming the relationship to be irretrievably broken. There haven't been a ton of specific details, but rumors are running rampant. Something pretty serious must have gone on in a very short amount of time because only hours before the announcement, Joe posted a photo of himself to Instagram with his wedding ring on. So despite the minimal amount of tea spilt, there are a ton of reasons that that divorce is messy. Number seven, Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater. So bear with me here. This divorce is actually caused by Ariana Grande and uh, there's actually a relationship that came out of it. So strap in. The pop star and Broadway giant are set to star in a film adaptation of the Broadway hit Wicked following the story of the Wicked Witch before the events of The Wizard of Oz. Ariana Grande plays Glinda the Good and Slater is Bach, the main love interest of the Wicked Witch. If you don't know who these people are, Ariana Grande was Nickelodeon and she's a big musician now and Ethan Slater played Spongebob on Broadway. It's ironic that Ariana is the good witch though as she appears to have stolen another woman's man. Ethan was married to a lady named Lily J since 2018 and they even welcomed their first child together in 2022. Apparently Ariana and Ethan fell in love on set and they've started dating behind the scenes. However, an on-set insider shared that information to Slater's wife who was furious. Gee, who would have guessed? While the couple have agreed to raise their child as co parents, Ethan eventually filed for a divorce in July of this year. Number six, Britney Spears and Sam Asghari. Britney and Sam's marriage is in shambles. This couple got together back in 2016 and they seemed to be great on the outside. As Britney was getting better overall, her relationship with Sam started getting more and more serious. Sam was right there by her side through thick and thin and eventually they tied the knot in 2022, which is why it was so devastating for fans to learn that the couple was calling it quits only a couple of 
months ago. The words used on the actual divorce paper says irreconcilable differences, which for Hollywood people tends to mean nothing good. Sam was the one who officially filed for the divorce, demanding that Britney pay spousal support and attorney fees. Since this news is so recent, there's not a ton of updates on how this couple are doing or how deep into the process of the divorce they are. Britney once again made headlines in the media, something that she hasn't really done since you know the early 2010s, and her divorce was covered constantly. So far, the internet has been weighing their decisions in ever since, and it's just getting worse and worse. Number five, Joe Alwyn and Taylor Swift. Joe Alwyn made his big screen debut, playing the titular character in Ang Lee's 2016 drama, Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk. The film tells the story of Billy, a private in the military who returns home and is praised as a hero, but through a series of flashbacks, we learn what really happened during his time away from home. The movie received critical acclaim, and Joe's career was kicked off. He co-starred in several other projects since then, but made paparazzi's front page after rumors of his supposed cheating on Taylor Swift. Joe and Taylor spent six years together before calling it quits, with this being one of her longest relationships to date that we have to wonder what split them up. Well, rumor has it that they broke up because Joe was cheating on Taylor with one of his co-stars of The Brutalist, Emma Laird. Emma posted a photo on Instagram with the caption, moments in March and a little heart emoji, and while there were plenty of pictures in the album, there was one that stuck out, and it was Joe appearing to hop on a little electric scooter with no Taylor in sight and no explanation as to why they were together. The reaction from Swifties was so strong that Emma had to turn off her comments. Since news broke of the split between Alwyn and Swift, Emma has been spotted comforting Joe, only adding more fuel to that rumor. Number four, Lily Reinhardt and Cole Sprouse. Cole Sprouse and Lily met on the set of Riverdale in 2016 while filming the pilot episode of the series that finally ended after being the most confusing show of all time. I had to stop after three seasons because they started talking about D&D &D and then Stranger Things and I don't know man, this is weird. Anyway, they fell in love playing Jughead and Betty having a relationship that lasted almost seven years. In 2020, things started to go downhill. They were plagued by cheating rumors and things had apparently become a little bit heavy behind the scenes according to Cole. Towards the end of that year, they confirmed the split online. However, this year, Cole spoke out about the breakup while having a cancer stick in the middle of an interview, claiming he didn't want to get too deep into the topic, but that it was a mutual decision, man. Lily began receiving violent and threatening messages following the interview as well as the end of the show. This past week, the rumors arose once more and fans are becoming online true detectives once more to uncover the truth. Just imagine there's a, that's like a little glass and my eye gets bigger. Number three, Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore. What's up with Ashton Kutcher these days? <laughs> Does he still do punk? In case, you know, punk doesn't unlock anything for you, uh, let's talk about Ashton's past for a moment. Ashton rose to fame following his successful role in the hit sitcom That 70s Show, as well as his time on MTV on the prank series Punked. He married fellow actor Demi Moore in 2005 and stayed married for like eight years. The split seemed to come out of nowhere, but there was some speculation that Ashton ended things to be with his current wife, Mila Kunis. That speculation was revealed to be complete bull poo poo though, or was it? In Demi's book titled Inside Out, she revealed that the cause of the split was due to Ashton's infidelity and not really specifying it. Apparently he cheated on her multiple times and pressured her into including a third party in their escapades, wishing to, you know, open their marriage to new company. When Ashton found out about the news becoming public, he was royally upset. According to Ashton, he had finally gotten to a place where the media was leaving him and his family alone, and the next day after the news broke, paparazzi were waiting for Ashton at his kid's school. Not only did his cheating ruin his relationship with Demi, but it kind of ruined his relationship with his family as well. So I hope Mila was worth it. Number two, Drake Bell and Janet von Schmeling. Drake was a small screen sweetheart in the early 2000s, being in several Nickelodeon shows like Drake and Josh and The Amanda Bynes Show. He was on track to being a megastar in the world of Hollywood, but unfortunately, he is just one of those child stars who took a turn for the worst. He starred in a ton of low-budget flicks over the years, but his status as a celebrity was gone by the time he got to 2021, where all of his bad habits culminated in the final nail being driven into his coffin. Drake was sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service after it was revealed that he had been grooming a fan for years. So if you see him on the side of the street picking up trash, it's probably why. Recently, it was announced that his wife Janet was going to be filing for a divorce from Drake after a situation where he was missing for five days on a supposed bender doing 
nobody knows what to nobody knows who. And on the actual paperwork, Vaughn has cited irreconcilable differences and has requested legal and physical custody of the younglings. In April of this year, Drake was reported missing only to turn up five days later. According to Janet, his mental health has slowly been declining in the last few years, but his toxic traits towards his partners is nothing new, as his ex Melissa Langefeld accused him of being verbally manipulative and physically violent when they were together. Number 1. Reese Witherspoon and Jim Toth Over the years, Reese made quite the name for herself, starring in films like Legally Blonde, Walk the Line, Hot Pursuit. She's well known for being a comedic actor able to tap into her serious side when the time comes for it. Along for the ride right up till 2023 was Jim Toth. Jim has starred in a handful of projects, but mainly acts as a producer creating sitcoms like According to Jim. The couple first got together in 2011 and then quickly tied the knot. Over the last 12 years, there's never been a sign that this couple was heading for disaster, but that might be due in part to them not getting out much. Reese has continued to act fairly steadily over the years, but for some reason has been appearing less and less in public. Perhaps there was something going on behind the scenes as the announcement came only two days before they were going to celebrate their 12 year anniversary. According to a statement released by both of them, the decision was mutual, saying they enjoyed their time with each other, but things just Number 10, Megan Fox and Brian Austin Green. Megan and Brian were together for over 10 years, sharing three little ones during that time. The couple first met in 2004 while filming the ABC sitcom Hope and Faith. After a couple of years of dating, they got married, but just because they put a ring on it did not mean that they were exclusive. They actually got engaged and split up a couple of times before officially tying the knot. Already a red flag right there. After becoming official though, many paparazzi spotted Megan and Brian and out and about with other people. Now at first we just assumed that they were close friends or something, but cheating rumors started to run rampant. As the years went by and their family grew, Megan's views on marriage started shifting. She would say that being married was a day to day task and it was becoming very difficult at times. Between 2015 and 2020, they were almost divorced twice and the main reason being was the spark was just dying out and they were starting to see other people. There's a good chance that this was happening while they were still married. When the official and final divorce was filed, Megan quickly found comfort in the arms of another man, that man eventually being MGK, the man that she is still with today and it seems like it's exclusive for now. While they never called their marriage open, they did start seeing other people while the rings were still on the finger, so definitely it, it counts, it counts. Number 9, Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore. Alright, what's up, I'm Ashton Kutcher and you just got put! That's something that actually used to happen on TV all the time and it sticks in my brain and I don't like it. In case that didn't unlock the MTV vault for you that I'm sure is hidden deep within everyone's memories, allow me to enlighten you. Ashton rose to fame following his successful role on the sitcom That 70s Show as well as his time hosting the MTV prank show, Punked. Now he married fellow actor Demi Moore in 2005 and stayed married for nearly 8 years. The split seemed to come from nowhere. There was some speculation that Ashton ended things to be with his current wife Mila, but that speculation was revealed to be complete bull poo poo. In Demi's book titled Inside Out, she revealed that the cause of the split was actually due to Ashton's infidelity. Apparently he cheated on her multiple times and actually told her about it trying to pressure her into including a third party and like create this open marriage thing that he wanted. When Ashton found out about this news becoming public, he was extremely upset. According to Ashton, he had finally gotten to a place where the media was just leaving him and his family alone and literally the next day following the news, paparazzi were waiting for Ashton and his kids outside of their school. Not only did his cheating ruin his relationship with Demi, but it kind of caused a problem between himself and the rest of his family. So that that's not good. Number 8, Lizzo and Mike Wright. During an interview on the radio show The Breakfast Club, Lizzo explained how she and her ex-partner Mike Wright were never really public, merely dropping their so-called soft launch earlier this year. But during the interview, Lizzo shared that she actually doesn't believe in the concept of monogamy, continuing by explaining her views on polyamory and so-called free love. Right on, man. She said that she didn't want to live by any specific set of rules and doubled down when another host on the show, Angela Yee, asked her if the circumstances would ever change, should Wright disagree with this polyamory situation? Well, Lizzo just said, well, it's just love. If he chooses to no longer love her while she loved him, that was on him. But she claimed that they did share a lot of love and that the chances of a split were pretty unlikely. Well, whether it was that comment or the fact that she is being sued for some pretty gnarly stuff, 
Mike decided to leave the superstar in search of a new life. Probably the best decision he's ever made. Number 7, Scott Disick and Khloe Kardashian. Keeping up with the Kardashians is a historical series in the world of reality TV. For over a decade, fans have been able to watch this family grow, both literally and figuratively, with the addition of friends, family, and in this case, ex-lovers. Scott and Courtney's story began where all fairy tale relationships begin at a famous friend's house in Mexico. In 2006, the pair attended a mutual friend's party at his home in Mexico, and a photograph from that night shows that they were sitting together, but they were nowhere near each other. Disick recounted liking Courtney immediately, but that she wanted, you know, nothing to do with him. But something must have changed in between A and B, as the two appeared as a couple on the series premiere of the reality show in 2007. At first, the family was standoffish, claiming that Scott was just immature and that his loyalties seemed to mean nothing because he might have been doing some stuff behind the cameras. Kris Jenner, Courtney's mom, said in one episode that she knows that Scott was cheating on her daughter, but that she wasn't sure how to go about the situation. Disick denied the claims and reaffirmed that he loved Courtney until he could deny no longer when sisters Kim and Chloe found a series of texts on an old phone from someone named my wife and well, it wasn't Courtney. The text revealed that he had cheated on her while the family was staying in the Hamptons and Kim was furious for about two seconds. And a year later, she had announced that the pair were expecting their first child together, making the whole cheating thing just seem like water under the bridge. Well, it didn't stop, because over the years, the couple split and healed over and over again. And one time, Scott Disick even entered rehab with the support of Courtney, and he still went out and did stuff behind her back. They split only to get back together again and again and again. And as of today, they seem to have called it quits for good, but good lord, that is a very complicated relationship. Number six, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. In 2015, Will Smith starred in a film called Focus, in which he played a con man in the midst of his latest scheme when a woman from his past, played by Margot Robbie, arrives and just throws everything for a loop. The timing of this film being made could not have been more perfect, as we know now that Will and Jada were taking a break during that time. For Jada, this meant an entanglement with August Alzina, and for Will, this might have meant some time for himself and Margot Robbie. You know, they were free to rehearse their scenes in private, if you know what I mean. It was confirmed that Margot and Will weren't seeing each other during production of Focus, because there were a lot of pictures, but, but Jada Pinkett Smith was certain about it. Despite being legally married in 1997, the institutionalized concept of tying the knot just never really sat with Jada Pinkett Smith. Apparently, she only married Will because she was pregnant with Jaden and felt that it was the right move to make, which is always a healthy way to start the marriage. Force. While Jada herself is also a cheater and has publicly admitted it, she's held a grudge towards Margot Robbie for eight years, but there's never been any proof, and for some reason she's mad even though there have been several times when these two have been like, oh, we're in an open marriage, isn't it neat? Well, Will and Jada might still be together for now, but I think we can all agree that they just need to get split already. Now, there are not a ton of public open marriages in the world of Hollywood these days, a oh, shocker, so why don't we just cover some cheater cheater pumpkin eaters that have been exposed over the the last couple of years. Number five, Mod Sun and Avril Lavigne. This year, shocking reports hit the internet claiming that Avril Lavigne had called off her engagement to Mod Sun. Well, a TMZ insider claimed that things had been on and off for a while as the couple tried to mend their romance. But then, when they got in touch with the Karma Singer team, a rep declared that the last thing he heard was the couple had been engaged, and that was only three days prior. So anything else would be news to him. Well, Avril Lavigne had been spotted out and about with a man named Tyga, who she claimed was just a friend. But the internet likes to gossip, so the headlines were Avril Lavigne cheats on Mod Sun. One week after his tour started and the news broke, he posted a series of photos on Instagram, making reference to a broken heart and knowing that there is a plan for everyone. Mod thanked his fans and then went dark. Since then, the two have been drenched in rumors, but the only thing that has been confirmed is these two now reside in Splitsville. Number four, Corey Feldman and Courtney Ann. Former Lost Boy star Corey Feldman has had a pretty rough life. Things have not gone great for this man, and unfortunately that applies to the love department as well. After seven years of marriage, he and his ex, Courtney, announced their split. According to Corey, life was just simply difficult for the couple, and the split was a mutual decision. However, one aspect he did not share with the world was the fact that for the past few years, they were in an alleged open marriage. While this was just a speculation, the couple were known to be free spirits, so to speak. Following some 
health issues, according to Corey, it just didn't make sense for these two to stay married. He decided to give her time to heal alone, while he just kind of continues to do his thing. Number three, Natalie Portman and Benjamin Millipede. After 11 years of marriage, it was recently announced that Thor Love and Thunder star Natalie Portman and her husband, Benjamin Millipede, will be separating following a pretty public and messy affair on Ben's part. Ben, who I assume was named after a children's cartoon, was spotted with a 25-year-old climate activist. While Natalie Portman was mad, she initially tried to work things out with Ben in an attempt to save their marriage, but the affair put a massive strain on the relationship. Shocker. The couple had met on set of the 2009 drama Black Swan, Ben acting as a script writer for that project. While the affair had shaken their relationship, when asked about the issues by Us Weekly, he said that he shared her pain and that he was sending her a new script. Huh? While they may still be working together professionally, emotionally, they have checked out. Number two, Drake Bell and Janet Von Schmeling. Drake was a small screen sweetheart in the early 2000s, starring in several Nickelodeon shows like Drake and Josh and the Amanda Vine Show, and he was on track to be a mega star in the world of Hollywood, but he's unfortunately one of those child actors who took a turn for the worse. He starred in a number of low budget movies over the years, but his status as a celebrity was gone. The final nail was driven into the coffin in 2021 when Drake was sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service after it was revealed that he had been grooming a young fan for years. So if you see him in an orange jumpsuit on the side of the street or something or cleaning graffiti, that's why. Recently it was announced that his wife Janet had filed for a divorce from Drake following a situation where he was literally missing for five days on a bender doing God knows what with strange women. On the actual paperwork, Vaughn has cited irreconcilable differences and has requested legal and physical custody of the younglings. Now in April of this year, Drake was reported missing only to turn up completely unharmed five days later. According to Janet, Drake's mental health has been slowly declining in the last few years, but his toxicity towards his partners is nothing new, as his ex Melissa Lingefelt accused him of being verbally manipulative and physically violent. Between his rocky history and declining mental health, we're happy to see that Janet got out of there before anything too crazy took place. Who knows how bad of a dad he will be? We all know he can't build a treehouse. And at number one, Shanine Doherty and Kurt Isrienko. This past April, the alumni of Charmed filed for a divorce from her husband Kurt after 11 years of marriage. She was photographed in March without her wedding ring on display, causing many to assume that the divorce had been something they were planning for quite some time. As with most celebrities who file for a divorce, the couple cited irreconcilable differences and Shanine claimed that divorce was the last thing she wanted. Unfortunately, her husband left her no choice. While there was no real confirmation on what was happening behind the scenes, according to Shanine herself, Kurt's agent intimately involved with their divorce. Neither Kurt nor his agent have spoken out about the rumors, probably because they're too busy getting down. Ooh. Number 10, Jeremy Allen White and Addison Timlin. Jeremy made a big move in the acting world after his FX comedy series The Bear premiered on Disney Plus this past year, but he's actually been making people laugh, cry, and scream since starring as Lip Gallagher in the hit TV series Shameless, a show that I definitely haven't watched 10 times start to finish back to back. Definitely wouldn't do that. No, no sir. He met his future wife, Addison, on set of a film called After School in 2008. They were close friends for almost 12 years before becoming an official item in 2019. The relationship has mainly taken place behind the scenes apart from a few Instagram posts, but Jeremy's love for his wife has been well known since his acceptance speech at the 2023 Golden Globes, where he won the award for the best actor in a musical or comedy TV series. Unfortunately, roughly two months ago, Addison filed for a divorce from Jeremy with little to no explanation so far. Far. Three days following the divorce announcement, she posted a picture of herself with her daughter on Instagram and captioned it, Single Mom, which was apparently news to Jeremy, who was under the impression that they would be co-parenting. While their relationship may have ended in a mess, there might be a new one on the horizon as Jeremy was spotted with Wizards of Waverly Place star Selena Gomez. Hey, Lip Gallagher and Alex Russo would be so cute together. Number 9, Natalie Portman. After 11 years of marriage, it was recently announced that Thor Love and Thunder star Natalie Portman and her husband, Benjamin Millipede, will be separating following a very public and messy affair on Ben's part. Ben, who I assume is named after a kid's cartoon, was spotted with a 25-year-old climate activist. While Portman was mad, she initially did try to work things out with Ben in an attempt to save their marriage, but the affair put a massive strain on their relationship. The couple had met on set of the 2009 drama Black Swan, with Ben acting as a script writer for the project. While the affair had shaken up their relationship when asked about the issues by Us Weekly, he said that he shared her pain and that he was sending her a new script. 
I don't know, while they may still be working together professionally, emotionally speaking, they have definitely checked out. Number 8, Drake Bell and Janet Von Schmeling. Drake was a small screen sweetheart in the early 2000s, starring in several Nickelodeon shows and movies like Drake and Josh, The Amanda Bynes Show, and of course the live action Fairly Odd Parents. He was on track to be a megastar in the world of Hollywood, but unfortunately is one of the many Nickelodeon stars who took a turn for the worse. He starred in a number of low budget flicks over the years, but his status as a celebrity was gone at that point. The nail was finally driven into the coffin in 2021 when Drake was sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service after it was revealed that he had been grooming a younger fan for years. So if you see him in an orange jumpsuit cleaning graffiti off of a wall, you might know why. Recently, it was announced that his wife Janet had filed for divorce from Drake following that situation and another one where he was missing for five days on a bender doing God knows what with the strange women women and friends that she had never met. On the actual paperwork, Vaughn has cited irreconcilable differences and has requested legal and physical custody of their younglings. In April of this year, Drake was reported missing only to turn up completely unharmed five days later, and according to Janet, Drake's mental health had slowly been declining in the last few years. His toxicity towards his partners is nothing new as his ex, Melissa Lingefelt, accused him of being verbally manipulative and physically violent. Between his rocky history and declining mental health, we're happy to see that Janet got out of there before anything too crazy took place. Who knows how bad of a dad this guy could actually be. I mean, we all know he can't build a treehouse. Number 7, Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner. Joe and Sophie got together back in 2016 after they had been set up by mutual friends, something that they had been trying to do for quite some time. They got together and instantly fell in love, getting married just over a year after getting together. Sophie admitted to Rolling Stones in 2019 that she was hesitant at first. Joe was this big musician and she was a big TV and film star, meaning that most of the time they would be on opposite ends of the world. Eventually, she warmed up and got together with Joe officially, but the split came out of nowhere. For the most part, their relationship has seemed to be stable on the outside. They were never a part of a cheating scandal, which is surprising considering Joe's lack of discretion in the past. There were never any strange rumors or photos. They were just this happy couple. But as of September 1st, Joe Jonas has filed for a divorce from Sophie, with the only current information being that Joe has claimed the relationship relationship to be irretrievably broken. Something pretty serious must have gone on in a very short amount of time. Only hours before the announcement, Joe posted a photo of himself to Instagram with his ring on full display. Despite the minimal amount of tea spilt so far, we are in for a very messy divorce. Number 6, Britney Spears and Sam Asghari. Britney and Sam's marriage is in shambles. The couple that got together back in 2016 seemed to be great on the outside. As Britney was getting better overall, her relationship relationship with Sam became more and more serious. Sam was right there by her side through thick and thin. Eventually they tied the knot in 2022, which is why it was so devastating for her fans to learn that the couple had called it quits just a little over a month ago. The words used on the actual divorce paperwork say irreconcilable differences, which for Hollywood people just tends to mean nothing good. Sam was the one to officially file for the divorce, demanding that Britney pay spousal support and attorney fees. Since this news is so recent, there is no current update on how the couple are doing or how deep into the process they are. Britney once again made headlines in the media, something that she hadn't really done since the early 2010s. Her divorce was covered constantly and the internet has been weighing in their decisions ever since. Number 5, Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater. So bear with me here for a moment because Ariana is actually the cause of this divorce, so strap in. The pop star and Broadway giant are set to star in a film adaptation of the Broadway Broadway hit Wicked following the story of the Wicked Witch before the events of The Wizard of Oz. Ariana plays Glinda the Good and Slater is Bach, the main love interest of the Wicked Witch. It's ironic that Ariana is the good witch though as she appears to have stolen another woman's man. Ethan was married to a woman named Lily J since 2018 and the pair even welcomed their first child into the world in 2022. Apparently Ariana and Ethan fell in love on set and started dating behind the scenes. However, Onset Insiders shared the information to Slater's wife, who was furious, and while the couple have agreed to raise their child as co-parents, Ethan officially filed for a divorce in July of this year. Number 4, Billy Porter and Adam Smith. Billy and Adam have been together for six years before recently announcing their amicable divorce. The American Horror Story star and his husband, Adam, met after being introduced by a mutual friend in 2009. They briefly dated, but ultimately split before getting back together in 2015 
seen and tying the knot a year later. Over the past few years, they have been one of Hollywood's favorite couples, regularly being spotted at award ceremonies and fancy events, just happily holding each other. It's so cute, it makes me want to vomit. Unfortunately, their relationship seems to have slowly fizzled out as they announced they would be filing for a divorce. The decision came from a conversation that they had and a decision that they made mutually, claiming they will remain friends for the rest of their lives. However, the online rumors and backlash suggest that something a little bit darker has taken place behind the scenes. They've asked everyone to give them some privacy, so why don't we skip some bad jokes and not get into the rumors and just move on to the next entry. Number 3. Shanine Doherty and Kurt Isrienko This past April, the alumni of Charmed filed for a divorce from her husband Kurt after 11 years of marriage. She was photographed in March without her wedding ring on display, causing many to assume that the divorce had been something planned for quite some time. As with most celebrities who file for divorce, the couple cited irreconcilable differences. Shanine claimed that the divorce was the last thing she wanted. Unfortunately, her hubby left her no options. While there was no real confirmation on what was happening behind the scenes, according to Shanine herself, Kurt's agent was intimately involved with their divorce. Neither Kurt nor his agent has spoken out about the rumors, probably because they're too busy getting down. Ooh. Number 2. Noel Gallagher and Sarah McDonald The former Oasis frontman, now in his mid-50s, revealed that himself and his wife Sarah would be filing for a divorce after 12 years of marriage. According to Noel, the couple simply got bored with each other, something not uncommon for people in their 50s. Speaking with Ireland's Hot Press magazine, Sarah told the outlet that the split was because she was sick and tired of Noel's partying habits. Even at the age of 55, this guy is acting like he's 20 years old, coming home late and reeking of no no juice. Noel denied the claims and said that it was because of 2020 and being stuck with her for months on end. Noel claimed that while he hated his time in isolation, it was a very revealing time in his life. He was able to work on songs that were unfinished as well as create some new ones. Much like a ton of couples at that time, they were realizing that they just weren't good at sharing a space. Before, they were able to go out and about and be alone, but for a solid six months, it was just them in a house every single day. So we get it. Number one, Reese Witherspoon and Jim Toth. Over the years, Reese made quite the name for herself, starring in films like Legally Blonde, Walk the Line, and Hot Pursuit. She was well known for being a comedic actor, able to tap into her serious side when the time came for it. Along for the ride right up until 2023 was Jim Toth. Jim has starred in a handful of projects, but mainly acts as a producer, creating sitcoms like According to Jim. The couple first got together in 2011 and quickly tied the knot. Over the last 12 years, there was never a sign that this couple was headed for disaster, but that may be due in part to them not getting out much. Reese has continued to act fairly steadily over the years, but for some reason, she has been appearing less and less in the public. Perhaps there was something going on behind the scenes as the announcement came only two days before they were supposed to celebrate their 12 year anniversary. According to a statement released by both of them, the decision was a mutual one, saying that they enjoyed their time with each other, but things just don't work out sometimes. That literally could have been the summarization for all of these splits. Number 10. How They Met In an interview with Harper's Bazaar UK in 2019, Sophie spoke about their meeting and she basically said they got set up. She explained that they had a lot of mutual friends and they had been trying to introduce them for quite some time. Apparently they were following each other on Instagram and he direct messaged her one fine day out of the blue. Soon after the meeting, he invited her to meet up with his tour that was passing through the UK. She said that the two of them had an instant connection, even though she had an expected to like him. She said he didn't bring security, he brought a friend, and they drank just as hard as the rest of us. I remember us two spending only a couple of minutes on the dance, and then we found a space in the far corner, and we just talked. Sophie went on to say that they talked for hours and hours, but that she was never bored. She felt that the conversation wasn't contrived, it wasn't small talk. From her point of view, it was just easy. She said soon they were inseparable, and then she went on tour with him. So at that point, it seemed like she had really fallen hard for this dude, and marriage came very quickly after after that, like very quickly, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Number nine, age is but a number. Joe was 28 years old when he popped the question to his then 21 year old girlfriend, Sophie. A lot of people believe that age is just a number. Many didn't find this to be a big deal at first. An insider close to the couple revealed that they were madly in love. And while Sophie is a bit younger than he is, she grew up in a small English town. So it's not completely out of the ordinary for an age difference to be glossed over. Many fans also came to her defense, citing her mental maturity. While she may have been 21, she was forced to grow up very fast, and because of that, she was probably closer to like a 30-year-old, mentally speaking. The red flag is that much like celebrities,
celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio or Al Pacino, Joe tends to date people much younger than himself, like supermodel Gigi Hadid. His oldest girlfriend was Taylor Swift. She was a whole four months older than him. Wow, make way for grandma! Despite how uncomfortable many fans found the age gap to be, the couple did not care and really, that's what matters. Number 8. Flirty McGurdy When these two first got together, it was believed that Joe had all of the leverage. Why? Well, Sophie was into him for quite some time, but she was aware that at the time, Joe was not known for his commitment skills. When they first met, he was a player, and according to several women, he was seeing them simultaneously and without each other's knowledge. Joe's tone shifted though when he met Sophie. By December of 2016, he was becoming a one-woman kind of guy. According to Sophie, they were intoxicated with each other and they started dating exclusively. However, it appears that he was playing the field for so long that he's forgotten to turn off his game. Joe was still flirting with women at his shows, and while it may have been accidental, the fact that he's not aware of what he's doing was cause for concern. Not only has Joe flirted with other people in the past, but apparently his ex Sophie did as well, with one of Joe's close friends whose jaw literally dropped when he saw her in real life. Number 7. The Private PDA Despite crying out to the public to just leave them alone, Sophie and Joe were known for their aggressive PDA. Whether it's getting cozy at an awards show, or at a Kings of Leon's concert, or during a shopping trip. Page 6 reported that in May of 2017, the couple went into a dressing room together in a Soho boutique. According to the report, the couple entered the change room and a customer noticed both of them in bare feet below the door. Now, while it's super creepy that someone was just peeking under doors in Soho, it was clear that Sophie was trying on clothes for Joe in the privacy of their own little room. When they exited, they noticed the couple to be giggly and very touchy-feely. Now, while being close isn't a bad thing per se, these two have constantly asked the world to ignore them and stop focusing on their love lives. Well, hey man, then stop licking your wife in public! Number 6. In and Out Ah, Las Vegas Weddings. Quick, easy, and everlasting. Joe and Sophie tied the knot in Las Vegas after publicly claiming several times that they were in no rush to get married. After telling the world they'd be taking time off for themselves following their engagement, it was not less than a month later that they tied the knot and attended the Billboard Music Awards right after getting their license, like on the exact same day. They went to a little wedding chapel in Las Vegas that's famous for its star weddings, like Britney Spears' marriage to her friend Jason Alexander for, like, I don't know, two days. Not to mention, the wedding featured some huge Vegas cliches. There was an Elvis impersonator literally officiating the thing. Many speculate that Joe was trying to prove something to his brothers by throwing the exact opposite of their weddings. Nick Jonas and Priyanka Chopra had an extravagant million dollar wedding spanning multiple days. The only people in attendance for Joe and Sophie were Joe's brothers, DJ Khaled and Diplo. They also didn't wear the traditional dress and suit, instead opting for slacks and jeans. To cap it all off, they used ring pops instead of real rings to seal the deal. Man, I feel like I'm describing a dream that I had. Number 5. Sophie was hesitant. Sophie Turner previously admitted to OK Australia in 2016 that she's never dated anyone who she didn't know before or who is in the industry. Her reasoning, well, in addition to being more focused on her career than her love life at the time, she claimed that their lifestyles were a contributing factor. Joe and Sophie had different ideas of what was fun. She went on to say how on-set romances are amazing, but they tend to be very temporary when it comes to their time together, so that was a big fear for her. The logistics seemed to be her main concern as well. If she was filming in Australia and he was on tour in the States, how would that work? They'd never see each other. After getting together officially with Joe, Sophie did admit that she felt like she was in a fishbowl. Frustratingly for her, the smallest thing would be made into headline news. If she stubbed her toe on the sidewalk, it was in the front page. Her frustrations are legitimate, but why maintain this charade for so long if you're uncomfortable from the start? Number 4. Short and Sweet Before being engaged, the couple only dated for a very short time. Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner were first linked after attending a Halloween party together in 2016. The singer showed up dressed as a Dalmatian, while his love interest sported some pink sequins bunny ears, according to People Magazine. Less than a week later, they were spotted looking very comfortable at the pre-MTV European Music Awards event in the Netherlands, where Kings of Leons performed. Less than a year after getting together, Sophie was spotted with a ring on her finger, and the engagement was confirmed. Many people get engaged early in their relationship, but as you've seen through this video, this was a case of rushing into things a little too quickly, considering some of the other entries on this list. Number 3. She's Messing with a Gold Digger According to an insider,
inside source close to the couple, Joe was beyond excited when he started dating Sophie and sounds like it's because of her money. According to the source, one of the main reasons that Joe is so smitten with his ex-man wife is because she is able to provide for herself and for him. Apparently Sophie does not let Joe pay for most things, something the musician is not used to. When speaking about his wife in interviews, Joe kind of just backed up the whole gold digger theory as the first and foremost thing that he mentions is how much he loves her independence. He literally said she buys me stuff all the time. I love it. While many praise Sophie for her efforts, many people started pointing out the red flag and expressing their discomfort knowing that Joe Jonas doesn't pay the bill when he's out with his lady. Maybe that's why they're getting divorced. Maybe she kept the tabs and the bill finally came due. Number two, different love languages. According to Sophie herself, she learned that a majority of what she knows about physical intimacy was from her time on the HBO series Game of Thrones. I'm not sure why this needs to be said, but I'm gonna say it. Don't treat Game of Thrones as something to learn from. Dragons aren't real. They're not real, Nate. Thanks to the show, it may have skewered her view on what proper intimacy looks like. Meanwhile, Joe just seems to love chit-chatting about his private parts. Seriously, like every chance this guy gets, it's genitalia. He boasted to Vulture in December of 2013 about removing his purity ring, which himself and his brothers, Kevin and Nick, rocked during their Disney days. In October of 2016, he then talked about the size of his little dinghy compared to that of his brothers, which is just too much information. Very uncomfortable. He goes on to recount the time that he lost his V card and about becoming a little bit too excited while filming music videos with Ashley Graham and Charlotte McKinney. Sophie has expressed her disappointment in this lack of restraint and has begged him to quit numerous times, but he persists and now they're divorced. And at number one, Joe took off his wedding ring first. In the weeks leading up to this divorce announcement, Joe was photographed without his wedding ring quite a few times. One of those moments was as far back as August 11th, when he was picking up an iced coffee in New York City. But since then, he's made a point of wearing it again, even as the couple have officially filed for divorce. On Monday, Joe posted a black and white photo on Instagram that showed him looking at the camera and holding a cup with his wedding band prominently on full display. Then, just this morning, he posted a statement to Instagram claiming that it was from the two of them. It said, after four wonderful years of marriage, we have mutually decided to amicably end our marriage. There are many speculative narratives as to why, but truly this is a united decision and we sincerely hope that everyone can respect our wishes for privacy for us and our children. This is quite a shock considering that the news only broke a few days ago. Sources spoke to TMZ and said that Joe had his people contact at least two divorce lawyers in LA and the couple has had serious problems in their relationship for at least six months. Number 10, the TMZ documentary. Earlier this year, TMZ released a documentary surrounding Britney's life and relationship to Sam. Throughout the doc, it's revealed that the relationship may seem fine on the outside, but in reality, they had been having problems for a very, very long time. According to the documentary, Sam and Britney would fight constantly to the point where Sam's bed became the pullout sofa in the living room. The doc also took aim at Britney's bad habits, claiming that she was hooked on caffeine. But not like, oh my god, I love coffee, you know? It was more like, I want coffee now! Apparently, she had a rather strong craving for Red Bull and would reportedly drink it by the gallon. Her need for caffeine and high energy substances led them to speculate that Britney was trying to cope with the difficult emotions regarding the relationship. Britney came out and claimed that she never drank energy drinks, sticking mainly to green teas and watermelon juice. Meanwhile, Sam denied several things from that documentary, but he didn't deny the caffeine control problem. Number 9, the cheating allegations. One major reveal from these two getting a divorce is that some proof has been revealed that shows the couple did in fact fight a lot. A few months ago, TMZ actually reported that Sam had accused Britney of infidelity, causing them to have a nasty verbal spat, leaving Sam out of the house and in need of a place to stay. According to the article, Sam had seen messages between Britney and a contactless phone number that were flirtatious in nature. When he confronted her about them, she was more mad than anything else. Sam went through her phone, which was, hey, not cool. The fact that they were both so quick to anger rather than solving the issue like adults was a major red flag for fans and was the first real heads up that these two were probably heading for disaster. Number 8, The Overcompensation. 
Now, there have been a few times where this couple has flaunted their success in the face of the world, whether it be their extravagant trips to Maui or their wedding ceremony. Money seems to make the world go round for these two, but their overcompensation may be a cry for help. The pair have always been seen with something expensive, either behind them or beneath them. For instance, when they were married a little over 14 months ago, the ceremony was drenched in money. The wedding dress that Britney was wearing was a white Versace gown with a long flowing veil. Sam was also in a Versace suit, and in attendance were roughly 100 guests including Drew Barrymore and Selena Gomez, and even Madonna showed up to this thing. Everyone looked so friendly and cozy, and then they drove away in a beautiful Rolls Royce. Now, I understand wanting to spend a lot of money on your big day, but these guys partied so hard. There were hundreds of thousands of dollars in goodies at this thing. Apparently, the ceremony was not all smooth sailing though, as a few hours prior to the start, Britney's ex-husband Jason Alexander made his way onto the property where he was not invited. A security team took him down and held him until the cops arrived. Now, whether it was the universe or Jason's jealousy, the rocky start to their ceremony was certainly a warning that this was not going to work out. Number 7. Sam's Typecasting Britney is of course a pop singing sensation, which means that she's filmed a few music videos in her time. One of the first red flags came very early on in their relationship. They met on set of her music video for the song Slumber Party as her love interest on the song Slumber Party where he played her love interest and arm candy. Sam had previously been featured in a music video for Fifth Harmony where he was also a hunky silent man, but this time he was a construction worker. Spending so much time with Sam as her man in the video must have convinced her that he was her one and only. Following the rap, these two continued to see each other constantly, with many paparazzo spotting them out at dinner or shopping. But it was revealed in the TMZ documentary, previously mentioned, that Britney continued to treat him as some pretty face that she was meant to direct. He recalls several fights over the way that he was being spoken to or the way that things were being done. Over the following months, anytime they were photographed together, they just look awkward. Like they're posing for a picture that they just really don't want to take. Number 6. The New York Times Defense Asgari. Asgari spoke out to defend Britney after a New York Times documentary took a closer look at her life and career amid her legal battles against her father. Her father, Jamie Spears, removed as her conservator. He told people it was important to understand that Sam had zero respect for someone trying to control their relationship and constantly throwing obstacles in their way. He wrote to his Instagram story in February of 2021 that, in his opinion, Jamie is a total dick van dyke. Not really, he just said, he also said, I won't get too deep into details because he respected his own privacy and he did not come to this country to be held back from expressing his opinions. The comments came a day after he gave a statement to People Magazine amid social media speculation about Britney. He held a very solid defense and maintained that any and all rumors about himself or Britney were just not true. The rumors of course were that the couple had been suffering some kind of an issue, but it was behind the scenes. Of course it turned out every single one of the rumors were true, with the possible infidelity scandal being the only one that's yet to be proven. So, the big question is, why did Sam deny the allegations so hard if he knew that there was something to them? Why spend more time with Britney when he seemed to have some idea that it wasn't working out? This was all before they were even engaged. So why would Sam double down? These are all questions that I wish I could answer, but until Sam or Britney respond to my emails, I got nothing. Number 5. Sam's Painful Smile Since the split was announced, more and more articles have come out of the woodwork containing various pictures from over the years. Now, this entry is for entertainment purposes. I didn't find anything to back up this theory, but can we just agree that this man looks uncomfortable like half of the time he's with Britney? In a ton of pictures, you can see he has this nice smile, but there are some where he just looks disheveled, like Britney just stepped on his toes moments before capturing the moment. My theory is that Sam has been trying to send us subtle messages, literally photographing himself crying for help. Now, I know what you're thinking, but hear me out. This guy is a professional model. It is his job to smile and look good on camera, but for some reason when Britney is around, his instincts go away and instead he goes to, uh, please go away. There are several photos of them in the most beautiful places in the world where one should not be able to wipe the smile off of their face. But Sam looks like he just smelled something terrible and it might be Britney. I don't know if there is much to that one, but hey, you never know. And yes, I'm aware I just spent a couple minutes roasting a model. No need to remind me I'm not one in the comments. Number 4. The Workout Takes 
Brittany's husband Sam is of course involved in the fitness world. Just look at this guy, his body is fueled by protein powder and Joe Rogan's podcast. But Sam actually used to be a bit of a heavy set man, going through a massive weight loss transformation before ever meeting Brittany. His story seemed to inspire her as throughout the majority of 2019 and 2020, Brittany and Sam were chronicling their fitness journey as a couple online, sharing workout clips and publicly tracking their goals. While doing a small interview for the Associated Press, the couple told the outlet that they they took over 40 takes of their intense workout, with Britney claiming to have been in an enormous amount of pain. However, the fact that they cared about getting the right take so much is a massive red flag. Instead of just working out together and bonding, they decided to get as much clout as they could. The more uploads for these two, the better. Sam was barely bothered by the workout, in fact the entire time you can see him silently judging Britney. If they were truly in love, Sam would have seen her pain and made her comfortable, but instead she was made to suffer. Number 3. They couldn't even share a bike together. Taking one of the top spots on our list is the most concerning and disturbing red flag of all. These guys had a chance to share a tandem bike together, and they didn't. What? <laughs> In June 2019, Britney posted a picture of herself and Sam on bikes riding through a park with the caption, I'm so blessed to have this in my neighborhood. To which Sam cheekily commented, do you mean the lake or that handsome gentleman? <laughs> there are two red flags here. The first of course being that the pair are simply riding bikes together and not on a two person bike like they do in the movies. The second is Britney's wording. In the post, she never actually says anything nice about her hubby. She responds to his comment but it wasn't filled with love, it was filled with Sarcasm. As I will mention later in this list, when it comes time to post things about lovey dovey stuff, Britney has a tendency to forget about Sam. I have no idea if some of these things are true on this list, this is for entertainment purposes, but man, I wish I had a direct line to Britney Spears, that would be a very interesting phone call. Number two, Sam sleeps on the couch. When it comes to a lover's quarrel, Sam and Britney are expert fire starters, able to rile each other up in an instant. One of the major reveals since the announcement of their split was the confirmation that there was a significant fire at some point in recent history. A story revealed in the TMZ documentary that Sam was spending most nights on the couch, wishing he could figure out what he did wrong. They had been having issues over the public image being presented by news outlets, cause they were somehow getting crucial information that caused severe stress for the couple. Whenever they would try to deal with their problems though, it ended in a massive blowout. Not long after the TMZ documentary was released, Sam was seen spiraling in public. Photos have since been wiped from the internet, but the idea of Sam sitting somewhere sad is not a fun sight. Brittany was probably in the exact same state, which may explain some of her more questionable behavior this past year. Don't believe me? Just check out her TikTok. And at number one, he loves her, but she doesn't love him. One major sign that this relationship was not working out were the several posts made about each other and the huge differences between them. Whenever Sam posts something about Brittany, it's like he's trying to write her a poem every single time. It's so eloquent and well thought out. Whereas when Brittany posts the photo, it's just like, luckiest girl around. Hashtag part date. This poor dude is laying awake at night trying to come up with a sweet way to wish his girl a happy birthday online, but Britney is the type to just send a cake emoji and a little winky face. Through the majority of their relationship, there are dozens of examples of Sam trying to be a sweet man and express himself when Britney is just giving him very little back. Sure, if it's a special occasion or something, she'll make a nice big post or snap a pic, but it's nothing major. At number 10, we have Meghan Markle and Princess Diana's similarities. People can't help but compare Meghan to her late mother-in-law. Their progressive viewpoints and the public's opinions of them align, and people worry that she could have a similar fate. It didn't help that just a couple of weeks ago, it was reported that after attending a charity event in New York, Prince Harry, Meghan, and Meghan's mother, Doria, were in a car chase. Similar to Princess Diana's tragic accident, they were chased by paparazzi. There were claims that the chase lasted two hours, but the police officers that helped the royal family security didn't mention anything about about a car chase. As it turns out, this was an over-exaggerated version of what really happened. While they were hounded by paparazzi, there was no car chase. All three made it to their destination safe and sound, as there was no evidence showing that they were participants in an adrenaline-fueled car ride. People criticized the royal family for making it seem worse than it really was, as it was described as nearly catastrophic. One of their drivers said it wasn't a car chase, and that he never felt like he was in any danger. He did say the family seemed quiet 
quiet and scared in the car, but nothing big really happened. Next, we have their potential divorce. People started assuming that divorce was on the table when it was rumored that they were growing more distant from each other. Once at a Lakers game, they were set up for the kiss cam segment, but Meghan moved away when Prince Harry went in for a kiss. This doesn't actually mean anything because she probably isn't very big on PDA in the first place. If you think about it, how often do you see a picture of the two kissing? Exactly. While people were assuming the worst, others were defending her actions, saying that it doesn't necessarily mean anything bad is happening between them. Then there were rumors of Harry staying at the luxurious San Vincent bungalows whenever he needed space for Meghan. These claims were immediately shut down by his reps, but sources were incessant that he did so when they fought and he wanted to escape the house. These are big claims coming from unverified sources. As an extremely elite and exclusive club hotel, they don't disclose who stays on their property, so there's no way of finding out if Prince Harry was ever a guest there to begin with. Next on the list, we have how she didn't want to attend the coronation. Meghan and their two kids were not present for King Charles' coronation. People assumed there was drama and bad blood and Meghan should be the bigger person and go anyways. They thought Harry was hurt and offended that she wouldn't attend this monumental event for his father. Clearly isn't the case as you have to remember that the couple agreed to stay away from their royal duties three years ago. Sure, would it have been nice to attend? Why not? But things have always been weird when it came to her and her royal in-laws. Maybe she avoided it altogether to avoid any potential exaggerated headlines, especially with her children by her side. And that's another thing. It was her son's birthday the same day and that's obviously a priority too. Despite her clear absence, people began theorizing that she actually did show up, but in disguise. It was mostly a joke, but there were claims that Welsh composer Sir Carl Jenkins was just Meghan in costume. Next, at number seven, we have King Charles' coronation. So yes, Prince Harry attended his father's coronation solo. He was a scene at the Buckingham Palace balcony along with his brother William and the rest of the royal family. He was actually sitting away from his immediate family members during the procession. This decision was obviously due to the fact that he and Meghan walked away from their royal duties, so he was no longer necessary to actively participate in it. But King Charles is still his father, so of course he showed up. People thought he was upset that Meghan and the kids didn't go with him, but people also love creating narratives to fit their fantasies. What if he didn't want to go either and he just did it out of obligation? I doubt it, but if we're gonna throw stories around, then why not? It's not like he was the odd one out, but he kind of was, as it was weird to see a prince apart from the other royal members. He wasn't even seated at the front row. He was given a seat at the third row and several seats away from his brother. It was later reported that after the ceremony, he didn't even stay for any celebration and went straight to the airport. During post-ceremony celebrations at the Buckingham Palace, where the rest of his family were, Prince Harry was already checking into his flight back to his other family. Family. Next on the list, we have Samantha Markle's defamation case. Meghan's half-sister, Samantha, filed a lawsuit against her under baseless claims rooted in unverified speculation and conjecture. After the release of the book, Finding Freedom, an unauthorized biography written about Meghan and Harry, there was a particular chapter that she didn't like. It was called A Problem Like Samantha, and that alone obviously got her attention. Aside from the book, she also said that Meghan made more defamatory comments during the infamous Oprah interview. She brought up how Meghan said, I grew up as an only child, which everyone who grew up around me knows, and I wish I had siblings. And she seemed personally offended by that. She also said Meghan's comments in the book and in the media caused irreparable injury and harm to her reputation, as well as anxiety and emotional distress. Apparently, as a result, she also received tons of hate mail, poor media representation, and one stalker. Unfortunately for her, she did not win the case as the judge dismissed it, claiming the evidence was not enough to prove that Meghan had the book published herself. Next, we have how she made him cut ties with his family. Three years ago, Harry and Meghan announced they would be officially stepping down from their royal duties effective immediately. In their written public statement, they said they will obviously still be living and supporting the crown and will be splitting their time between the UK and living in California. It seems like it was a mutual agreement and not one based on Meghan herself. This alone shows how devoted Harry is to her and their truth because the fact he's balancing this all with his reputation and his duties as Prince Harry, that's real love. During the press conference, 
regarding the announcement, he wanted to make it clear that this transition did not mean they'd be walking away from their duties altogether. He was hoping to continue onward with it without public funding, but found that it wasn't an option. He also said, I've accepted this knowing that it doesn't change who I am or how committed I am, but I hope that helps you understand what it had to come to, that I would step my family back from all I have ever known to take a step forward into what I can hope can be a more peaceful life. Queen Elizabeth later released her own statement sharing her and the family's support for their couple and their choice to live independently from the crown. At number four, we have security issues. Because of this decision to live independently from the royal family, Harry was more than willing to pay for his family's own security when traveling to the UK. But for some reason, this wasn't allowed. In a statement written by the UK's executive committee, they wrote, it was not appropriate to support an outcome whereby wealthy individuals could buy protective security from specialist police officers, potentially including armed officers. They were saying it affects public interest because it's publicly funded. I hope that makes sense to you because I still don't get it. If you think about it, it's kind of dumb. Harry is battling it out with the UK High Court because he wants to pay for security, as in give them money in exchange of their services and they won't let him. It seems he's lost and they're still in talks of how to go about it. If they're offering him free security and he doesn't want to accept it out of obligation to the whole living independently thing, I think he should just take it. Their safety is top priority at this point. Next on the list we have Prince Harry's hacker. Harry and Meghan's marriage is so publicized, people will do anything to get their hands on the nitty gritty details for the next biggest headline. There was often blame put on Meghan that they go through so much and he shouldn't be willing to go through this extra mile for her. Regardless who Harry ended up with, the aftermath would still be the same as he's been hounded by paparazzi and nasty articles all his life. In 2019, he sued the newspaper company The Mirror for phone hacking after they revealed very personal experiences of his life that no one should have ever found out about. These stories were specifically from 1995 to 2011, and they managed to get information about his family, their relationship, his time in the military, and even stuff about his ex girlfriend Chelsea Davy. The newspaper's representatives said they once hired a private investigator to gain intel and other methods were done within the law. Harry did lose the case with lack of evidence, but he did receive an apology from them and other local publishing companies. At number two, we have how their relationship is always serious. So why would anyone want to be in a boring relationship? People think that just because of their status and all the drama that comes with marrying into royalty, there's no time for joy. They have their responsibilities, but they have fun too sometimes. Remember that Lakers game I mentioned earlier? That was actually a date because why else would they go to it? They were spotted in the arena and like many celebrities, their presence was captured and made known to the rest of the audience. They were shown on the jumbo Trons, they were part of the evening's kiss cam, and that's all there was to it. A few months ago, they attended a charity gala where they were awarded an award for their philanthropy. On stage, Harry made a joke about how he thought they were there for a date night. Then he turned to the audience and said, we don't get out much because our kids are so small and young, so this is completely unexpected. It's nice to share date night with all of you. Thank you for coming. Megan joined in on the joke and thanked him for taking her out, and this just goes to show that their marriage isn't all formal and interviews. They can have fun too. And finally at number one, we have his father-in-law. Megan and her father's relationship was a constant debate. She would describe their relationship as strained, while others on his side of the family said they were close. Nonetheless, Thomas Markle made headlines when he was caught staging photos for the paparazzi. He was famous by association and was willing to participate in this odd photo shoot for the British press. CCTV footage at an internet cafe caught Thomas meeting up with his photographer, Jeff Rayner. One of the photos included handed shots of him looking at a picture of Meghan and his son-in-law. Who would even use that picture? It's so obviously staged. It's unclear if he was paid for this or not, but some of the photos were sold for up to £100,000, so I wouldn't be surprised if they promised him a cut of their profits. Later, he did sue Jeff and his media company for publishing photos without his approval, which apparently went against their signed contract. So with all this, is marrying into royalty really worth it? Seems like they're constantly 
constantly battling it out with the media to uphold their version of their fairy tale ending. Starting off our list in the number 10 spot, we have Miley Cyrus and Liam Hensworth. When Miley released her new album, Endless Summer Vacation, some of her fans started to think that the album's lyrics contained cheating allegations against her ex husband, Liam Hensworth. But both Liam and Miley first meeting in 2009 when they were both filming on the set of the last song. By December of 2018, they would finally tie the knot, and after being in an on and off again relationship for years, after they both split in 2019. When fans began listening to Miley Cyrus's new song, Muddy Feet, they were quick to link the tracks, lyrics to Miley and Liam's relationship, in which Miley sings about smelling perfume that doesn't belong to her on her partner. When she sings, and you smell like perfume, I didn't purchase. Now I know why you've been closing the curtains. Get the F out of my house. I don't know who the hell you think you are messing with. Get the F out of my house with that stuff. Get the F out of my life with that. The point of track would come just two months after Miley released her first single off the album called Flowers, which she also sparked buzz among fans, as it was a dig at Hemsworth and proved that Liam did in fact cheat on the singer with Jennifer Lawrence. And it also went on to highlight the couple's marriage and that it was everything but perfect. And she never was the bad guy like Liam's family painted her to be. Number 9. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West If you think a lot has happened since season 2 of the Kardashians, Kim Kardashian agrees. As in the first trailer for the Kardashian season 3, the mom of 4 can be heard saying, I don't even know where we left off. When the producer reminds her that last season the Skims founder was dating Pete Davidson, she would then say, things changed really quickly. The trailer then took a sad turn after Khloe Kardashian asked him if she's feeling okay about everything, and this is where we can see Kim Kardashian breaking down when she says no, I'm not okay, I'm having such a hard day today. Amid Kim's divorce from Kanye West, her mother Kris Jenner can even seen being telling her daughter, saying that she has the weight of the world on her shoulders. Later Kim can even be seen talking about what Kanye had to say about their kids being on social media during their heated divorce when she said it was the most insane narrative and she was trying just to stay silent through all of the lies for her kids sake. With season 3 premiering on Hulu May 20. We know there's about to be some more drama to come with Kim and Kanye's dark divorce and you can expect us to keep you all up to date on it. Hey everyone, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, you know, subscribe to the channel so you never have to miss out on what we might just cover next. And trust me, you definitely want to tune into the next video. Coming in at the number 8 spot, we have Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes. When Katie Holmes and Tom Cruise finally got divorced after being married for 5 years, fans would be shocked to learn that she made a decision to leave her ex-husband because she had reason to fear for her life and her daughter's life. With Tom being heavily involved in the controversial religion Scientology, he has been a well devoted member of the church. With the church of Scientology being known for treating defectors with intimidation and brainwashing techniques, when Katie finally realized what the church was doing to her and her daughter, she knew she had to get away. So in order to do so, she immediately went into hiding when the news of their split broke. Katie had to do so because she couldn't let anyone know including Tom, where she was going because she had to get out and stay safe. The matter would be resolved in 11 days and Katie would be granted physical custody of the couple's former daughter and it would even be stated that Tom couldn't bring their daughter anywhere near the church and Katie wouldn't be allowed to have any public relationships for 5 years as Tom was scared it would embarrass him. But it makes you wonder what the church did that scared Katie so much. Number 7. Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie When Brad Pitt starred with Marianne Cotillard in the drama Allied in 2016, rumors began circulating online and in them they would claim that Brad was cheating on Angelina Jolie with his co-star. Of course, as many would remember in the past, the same rumor also plagued Brad when he was married to Jennifer Aniston. As when he was working on the set of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the tabloids kept claiming that he was cheating on Jennifer Aniston with Angelina Jolie. With the rumors reaching a fever pitch, this is when we would see Angelina Jolie file for a divorce from her ex-husband Brad Pitt pit on September 16th, 2019. But the truth would become so much darker than that. With the story honestly being a speculation as it follows, it is also alleged that the couple's relationship would come to an end after 
after Brad was under the influence on a private plane with his family. And during an argument with Angelina, when his adopted son stepped in to defend his mother, Angelina Jolie would claim that Brad actually struck him. And just five days later, Angelina would then file for a divorce. But that's not all. The Los Angeles Department of Child and Family Services and the FBI would then be called in to investigate the matter. It would ultimately be cleared, but a long custody battle would end with a heartbreaking ending while Brad and Angelina agreed to share custody of their six kids. And Brad and his son have now remained estranged. Number six, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. During Johnny Depp's and Amber Heard's bitter court battles, things got a little heated for both the stars, and their darkest secrets would be revealed within their messy feud. Shortly after Amber filed for divorce in May of 2016, just 15 months after her marriage came to an end, Amber would accuse Depp of getting into a physical argument with her, and she went on to obtain a temporary restraining order against him. The actress also initially requested that she should be given spousal support from Johnny, but later withdrew her appeal. Johnny and his lawyers have since denied Amber's claims, even after the two finalized their divorce back in 2022. The duo would also enter into a highly publicized defamation trial, where they would accuse each other of some pretty gruesome claims. However, at the end of the day, the jury ultimately ruled in favor of Depp and then ordered Amber to pay her ex-husband $15 million in damages. After they found and proved she acted with malice to ruin Johnny's career. After the jury's findings, they also did determine that Depp's attorney did make one defamatory statement about Amber and she would be awarded $2 million in compensation. But the whole trial didn't exactly paint Amber to be the person she was trying to make the world believe she was. Number 5. Kris Jenner and Robert Kardashian Kris Jenner definitely proved she hasn't always chosen the right path when it comes to her love life. And in the wake of her separation from Caitlyn Jenner, Kris Jenner would state that the only regret she had in her life was the fact that she got divorced from her first husband, Robert Kardashian, back in 1991. Kris would then later talk about her marriage to Robert when she decided to publish a memoir. And in the memoir, she would reveal that her marriage only came crashing down after she decided to have an affair with her husband and their good family friend, Todd Waterman, while she was still married to Robert. Now you would think that the affair would have been her biggest regret in life, but at the end of the day, she really just regrets that she wasn't able to end up with Robert before he passed away in 2003. Later, the star would also admit that if she didn't cheat, she would have never gotten with Caitlyn Jenner and gave birth to her two beautiful daughters, Kylie and Kendall. While she looked at it through that lens, she would then realize that she doesn't really have a lot of regrets when it comes to her life, except for cheating on her late ex-husband. Number four, James Cameron and Linda Hamilton. James Cameron's ex-wife, Linda Hamilton, has always described James as being a man married to his job. That was until he was gone and got married to somebody else. While James Cameron's 1997 film Titanic sunk his own relationship, his fourth wife, Linda Hamilton, once came out to shade James from the Titanic film point of view when she said, the Titanic was the mistress he left me for. The Terminator star then went on to describe every year she was married to the director as being one of the most terrible things to happen on almost every level. She also claimed that James was also consumed so much by his work almost every day with his cinematic Leviathan. In the 90s, during the couple's former divorce settlement, Linda would also be able to walk away with a $50 million settlement, and it would be described as being one of Hollywood's biggest divorce settlements that Hollywood has ever seen at this time. James then went on to get married quickly to his actual human mistress who happened to be the Titanic actress, Susie Miz. Number three, Alec Baldwin and Kate Basinger. After Alec Baldwin and his ex-wife Kim Basinger finally got divorced, their custody battle would go on over their daughter Ireland for years to come. Eventually an infamous voicemail would then start to be leaked all over media sites after Alec could be seen calling his daughter, who was 11 years old at the time, a rude and thoughtless pig. While the voicemail definitely went on to paint a not so pleasing picture of Alec, it really started to show how he treated his family. By 2008, the former couple's divorce would then be filed with hundreds of legal documents, 91 court proceedings, and approximately $3 million in legal fees. And things will remain pretty heated between the two. But it wasn't really shocking as how could you say such hurtful things about your own child. But more than a decade later in 2016, Kim would reveal 
reveal that things between her and her ex finally cooled down as the pair noticed that they had to be better co-parents for their daughter as their feud was affecting her negatively. But thank goodness they came to that thought. Number 2. Princess Diana and Prince Charles Princess Diana's marriage to Prince Charles was extremely strained, and when the media began reporting about both of their infidelities, Queen Elizabeth once even had to write them a letter where she gave them one chilling demand. When the Queen urged both Diana and Charles to get a divorce, by August of 1996 her will would be done, as the young couple went their separate ways after a notorious stressful marriage. However, things would become even darker as after Charles and Diana finally finalized their divorce, Diana would be stripped of her royal highness status, so the family could make a mockery out of her. This meant that she would have to curtsy to those who had it, including her own children. Later Diana would pass away in a mysterious car crash after she started to leak royal secrets to the press. And since her passing has many conspiracy theories that all point fingers at the royal family as they claim, but seriously, the fact she knew she was going to pass away in a car crash just weeks before it happened is a pretty unsettling thought. And coming in at number 1 today we have Madonna and Guy Ritchie. Madonna and director Guy Ritchie had a pretty interesting 8 year marriage to say at least. When the former couple's marriage came to an end in 2008, the material girl singer even had to pay Ritchie 92 million dollars in a settlement, and their divorce is still highlighted to be one of the world's biggest divorce payouts to this day in Hollywood history. And if the couple's split couldn't get any more messier, this is when Madonna's lawyers also started to accuse Ritchie of being verbally incorrect as he couldn't stop calling Madonna a granny. While Ritchie's lawyers have also gone on to accuse Madonna of being emotionally controlling, the world would soon come to know that it isn't really easy to date Madonna as she rarely allowed her husband to eat meat and she never let him host his friends at their home. With the two having such a complicated relationship, maybe it isn't exactly a tragedy that they both split up. Cheating is never right no matter what the situation is, and if you're having doubts about your partner, have a conversation with them instead of hurting them.